So what's the role of your motherboard in the computer? It provides the primary connection and interface control for all the components in your computer. The motherboard and the chipset installed on it provide the power to the circuits and in conjunction with the CPU define the when, where and how of the data to be transferred to and from each of the components connected to the motherboard. So what's inside the box when you purchase a motherboard? You've got the motherboard itself. You've got the motherboard backing plate for the case. You've got the driver CD for the motherboard. You've got the user manual for the motherboard. And in this case here, we have two SATA data connectors and an additional two SATA data connectors as well. So these are used for your solid state drives, your hard drives and your DVD-ROM connections. So let's overview the motherboard. Here we have our CPU array. We have our four CPU cooler mounting points. We have our CPU fan connection. We have our four RAM module connection points. We have our PCI Express slots. We have our M2 connectors. We have our 24 pin motherboard primary power connection. We have our eight pin secondary CPU power connection. We have our motherboard mounting points. We have our USB 2 headers, our USB 3 headers. We have our case interface header. We have on this side of the motherboard, our serial ATA ports. And on the back of the motherboard here, we have our PS2, USB, USB type C, HDMI, other USB slots. We have our ethernet connection and audio outputs from the motherboard. So some main considerations when buying a motherboard would be what type of CPU do you want to use? How configurable do you want the motherboard to be? How many graphics cards are you going to install? How many hard drives, solid state drives and SATA ports do you need? How many RAM slots are required? And how many expansion slots for other cards such as sound cards, Wi-Fi cards? All of these options will define the budget, the size and the chipset required on the board. You've got a choice of a number of motherboard sizes when you purchase a computer. Generally, the larger amount of expandability that you need, the larger the motherboard. Now the motherboard size and the mounting holes change based on the size of the board that you choose. Common motherboard sizes are ATX Extended, ATX Standard, Micro ATX and Mini ITX. Generally, the motherboard requirements define the size of the case required, not the other way around. So in front of me, I've got two different size motherboards. This one here is a standard ATX motherboard, and this one here is a micro ATX motherboard. They're the same width, but the length of the board of the micro ATX board is slightly shorter, which means it has slightly less expansion than the standard board. All motherboard sizes are standardized, which ensures that the boards will be compatible to cases made by many different manufacturers and ensures wider compatibility and availability of cases. Now, we touched lightly on the motherboard chipset before, which its main role in conjunction with the CPU is to define the when, where, and how of the data to be transferred to and from each of the components connected to the board. The motherboard chipset is paired to the CPU type used. The supporting motherboard chipsets are generally released and phased out at the same time as the CPU to ensure maximum compatibility, but it is still something you'll need to check. Due to the large amount of data being transferred between the RAM and the graphics cards to the CPU, the CPU now controls the data flow from the RAM and the graphics cards directly interfacing to the motherboard chipset for the lower bandwidth tasks, such as USB, SATA, networking, and other slower PCI Express slots. 
So one chipset type can support a manufacturer CPU of many different speeds and cores, but the type of chipset that you choose is dependent on what you want to use the computer for. Manufacturers mainly offer three tiers of chipsets, all of which offer the same base performance, but some offer greater expandability and configurability, such as being able to run multiple graphics cards or to overclock. The base chipsets at present are Intel's B series and AMD's A series, which can be used for office and mid-range gaming PCs. The chipsets which generally support multiple graphics cards are the H and B series, generally used by high range gaming PCs, and the chipsets which support all of the above and overclocking are the Z and X series, used by high-end gaming PCs. So a motherboard and computers in general provide for standardised interfaces. For example, your serial ATA, your RAM, your PCI Express, your USB and your M2 connections are all engineered with various committees and manufacturers, and a final standard or way of implementing this interface is decided and then applied. This standard interface is what provides consistency and allows many manufacturers to produce compatible equipment for many types of interfaces across many different types of boards. For example, you can use an AMD graphics card in an Intel chipset motherboard, even though they're competing manufacturers, or say using a Kingston DDR4 RAM in a Gigabyte motherboard. Providing the standard interface connector is present, these will be compatible. This allows manufacturers of all different types to produce products compatible across manufacturers and ranges, such as using an ASUS manufactured video card on a Gigabyte manufactured motherboard. For example, these two motherboards here, aside from their size differences, the main difference is that they each support a different CPU type with their accompanying motherboard chipset. For the remainder of the interfaces, many of the other parts I have here would fit in either, providing the interfaces were compatible, such as the PCI Express, the DDR4 RAM, and the CIDR interfaces on the boards. And a few quick motherboard tips. When you're installing your motherboard, uh, remember you've got your primary motherboard power, but also don't forget to install your CPU power supply. And as well, when you're choosing motherboard types or specifications, if you're after ones with specific Wi-Fi or sound in them, you might be able to make a saving by buying separate PCI Express cards, which may be of a higher quality than those that could be incorporated in a more expensive motherboard itself. So if you'd like to learn more, jump over to our website at easypcbuilder.com, where you can download our monthly updated build guides for gaming PCs of various levels, office PCs and media PCs, and you can also download our Easy PC Builder Master Course. Thanks for watching.